Previously on the channel, I have talked about samurai swords, spears, guns, and even axes. But one weapon type I have yet to dive into is that of the war club. Throughout Japanese history, there'd be a unique variety of these blunt weapons, which have always fascinated me ever since I saw them for the first time on the Spike TV show Deadliest Warrior, which I really miss by the way, that was a fun show despite how wacky and fake it might have been. Yet, I imagine many more of you might recognize this weapon type from the Shugoki character in the game For Honor. Either way, today we are going to dive into these war clubs to discuss their history, how they would have been used, and then of course, how practical they may have actually been. But first, I also need to mention that this video is once again done in collaboration with two other history channels, Samurai and Ninja History and Sengoku Studies, who are both releasing fantastic samurai weapon videos this month as well. I will leave links to their videos down below. Please go check them out, they are covering some really interesting weapons this time around. Yet, getting back to the various types of samurai blunt weapons out there, let's get one thing out of the way first. Terminology. I actually ramble on here about terminology probably a bit too much, so if you want to skip all that, check out the timestamps I've listed down below. Now, there are plenty of different terms out there for these types of weapons used across the world. From maces, to mauls, to warhammers, to clubs. There is a lot to go through, and although they are all very similar in nature, they are all slightly different. So, for this video, what I'm likely going to do is stick with the term War Club. The reason being is that I think it matches up the best in terms of each of the names I just listed. Maces are usually, but not always, designed or depicted as one-handed weapons. I'm sure there will be people arguing with me about this in the comments, but what I'm getting to here is the most common idea most people have for the weapon. What usually pops into their head when they think about it. Mauls, on the other hand, end up looking a bit more like a hammer, which then leads straight into the idea of warhammers, which of course have a very distinctive shape themselves. The club is really the last option which fits the best, being that, by definition, it is a heavy stick with a thick end, especially one used as a weapon. And although the primary example we have for war clubs is often that of Native American blunt weapons, we can also apply it here to Japanese blunt weapons. Although the longer two-handed variants are the more famous of the Japanese war clubs, there are also shortened one-handed versions as well, which once again could get back to the whole argument about using the term mace. In fact, to be honest, I think that the term mace is actually totally acceptable to use here. Both definitions check out. But just given the larger one-handed idea that often pops into our heads, or at least my head when I think about a mace, I just feel War Club would be the better universal term to use here. Once again, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. But enough about terminology, let's get into the actual history. The first record of Japanese War Clubs emerged during the 14th century. That's not to say that other designs had not emerged prior, as there are even stories and depictions of the famous warrior monk Benkei, using them all the way back into the 1100s. But in all likelihood, the real emergence of the designs we know of today largely seem to have come into being during the 1300s. Its arrival would come at an interesting point in samurai warfare, as more and more established norms of samurai combat were shifting. The late Kamakura and into the Muramachi period saw the rise of heavier implementation of mass infantry and ground tactics, as opposed to the style of mounted samurai warfare which had been famous in prior years. Of course, throughout this time we see all sorts of interesting infantry weapons catch on in greater popularity, from more standard designs like the Yari Spear to more unique designs like the Nodachi and Nagamaki. And it was around this time that we also start to hear more about the rather obscure Japanese war clubs. There would come to be several different variations of these percussive weapons, ranging from shorter one-handed versions to larger two-handed versions. These all come with their own unique names as well, from Kanabo to Tetsubo to Kanasaibo and more. However, most of them sort of all mean the same thing, referencing the weapon as a larger bar or rod. The name that I am most familiar with is usually Kanabo, but I have seen Tetsubo used quite frequently as well, mostly today in video games oddly enough. They come obviously made out of two materials, wood, iron, or a mixture of both. 
But what really starts to get interesting is what gets put on the surface of them. Some are purely blank or flat, relying on just the blunt, percussive nature of the weapon to do the trick, almost like a baseball bat. Yet more frequently are either seen or depicted designs that incorporate either metal studs or spikes. And this is where we start getting into their actual implementation, and why these differences actually matter. Now, there are sort of two main reasons that get pointed out as to why these weapons came into existence. What their initial purpose may have been and why they would have caught on with some samurai and even warrior monks. One was the idea that it could be used as an anti-cavalry weapon, to take out a horse's legs. Which is an awful thought, although it should be noted that it is difficult to actually find examples of this ever occurring. In fact, there are probably more examples of war clubs being used while on horseback, as is depicted in certain works of art. This would have actually been possible, because although they appeared like they would have been a very heavy weapon, they needed to still have been a manageable enough weight to be used effectively, and were probably comparable in weight to other heavy weapons of the time. So if they were not necessarily being used solely as an anti-cavalry weapon, in what other areas might they be useful? Well, I like the reasoning that Gunsen History states in his fantastic article which I'm using to help write this script. In the article, he links their rise in popularity to the evolution of samurai armor at the time. Throughout the 14th century, as Japanese warfare was heavily shifting, so too was samurai armor, to meet the needs of the current face of samurai combat. Plenty of improvements to samurai armor were arising in Japan, and these war clubs were likely a great response to this, as percussive damage is able to bypass the hardness of armor through blunt force trauma, being able to still crack bones, crush organs, and cause internal bleeding if a proper hit is landed. This is also where studs and spikes along the club could be more decisive. Spikes are obviously able to likely pierce and damage armor which also might be great for taking a rider off of his horse. However, a drawback of spikes along the club might also be that it could get stuck in the armor, causing the wielder to become open to attack. Alternatively, studs likely raise its percussive capabilities, and also allow the wielder to move his hand up the shaft to grab the end of it, whereas with spikes he could not. It really comes down to the preference of the wielder, and how they intend to use the weapon. This further plays into the various martial arts that could be used along with it. Like Japanese battle axes, there is not a solid martial art that we can attach specifically to war clubs like we can with swords and spears. Instead, a wielder would likely be pulling from such martial arts as bojutsu, which usually revolves around techniques with a quarterstaff. However, other martial arts including kenjutsu, sword techniques, may also be applied in certain scenarios. Now, as you may already know or have gathered so far, as I have been alluding to, Japanese war clubs were not used all that often. They never really took the place of another weapon or caught on in mass, resulting in them still being rather obscure to this day. In fact, the list of famous wielders of these war clubs appear to be quite small. As I mentioned earlier, Benke is said to have wielded one, yet due to the real introduction that we see of it coming later, it's hard to say that he really did. And in fact, it may be a stereotype coming from perhaps the idea or generalization of warrior monks using war clubs. Yet two significant samurai names during the Sengoku period who were known to have wielded war clubs were the Uesugi general Kojima Yataro and even Daimyo Mogami Yoshiaki. Now although in reality these war clubs were a bit more of a rarity, there is one place that they actually have become quite famous, and that is more into Japanese folklore as oni, fierce and demonic evil creatures that often get compared to ogres, are very often depicted wielding war clubs. A weapon perhaps befitting of a brutish and barbaric creature. Indeed, when we think of such fantasy monsters as giants, trolls, or ogres outside of Japan, we so often do so picturing them wielding a large and intimidating club of some sort. So it makes sense that this idea can also be found in Japan as well, with their interpretation of such creatures. And this then perhaps comes back to the idea of those real figures who wielded it, and how they might have been perceived for using such a weapon. It's why a figure like Kojima Yataro may have been associated with Oni. Not just for the depictions of them that adorned his helmet and standard, but also for the war club he used. This also transfers up to this very day 
as we still see depictions in modern media portraying wielders of such weapons as large ogre-like brutes. That's not to say that actually using such a weapon was any more or less barbaric or savage than any other weapon, as to use one and to do so with skill would have been a tremendous and incredibly intimidating feat. I would like to once again remind you that this video is done in collaboration with channels Samurai and Ninja History and Sengoku Studies, who have each made fantastic videos revolving around various samurai weapons this month. You can find links to them down below. And with that said, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.